Hello and welcome back. We made it. We finally we made it to the third、yeah. season of Japan Business Time. After you wouldn't believe, but but we made it here. It's all good, and、uh, we are back for after after the last season got a little bit too dark sometimes. We wanted to come back and talk about some of the more fun and positive things about working in Japan. So that's why this third season is going to be called the Joy of Japanese Business. Um, and it's our third season, finally, of、uh, Japan Business Time with Rochelle Cop. And、uh, for the first topic today,、uh, a regular commenter on the show, actually, it's myself.、Uh, we're going to have、uh, reasons to work at a Japanese company.、Uh, I mean, after the last season, you must you, you must be wondering. You wouldn't want to ever. Why、right? would anyone want to work for a Japanese company? But millions of people do. So every day. So yes,、uh, why why did I join? Why did Rochelle join? And what are the good good parts about working for a Japanese company? So we're going to start with that to kick off a new exciting season of Japan Business Time. So hang around. So I mean, one thing we both have in common is that we made that decision at some point in our lives to come to Japan and to work for Japanese companies. Right. And we've kind of built our, our lives on the good and bad of those experiences ever <laughs> yes, since. Yes, I think so for both of us. It's easy to talk about the negative stuff, and people intuitively this is YouTube, right? So people want to ask how many people die or why do they quit. But the fact is, is that we made this choice because it was a cool thing to do, and there were a lot of upsides, which we still, which we regularly feel the benefits of. Yes. So, just for a minute, anyone who saw the last season must think you'd be crazy to join a Japanese company. So let's remind ourselves: Why did we join Japanese companies,、uh-huh. and what are the good parts? Ah, well, I know for myself, I wanted to experience Japanese business culture from the inside and understand how it really works, and. I worked for a big Japanese company, and big Japanese companies make Japan go around, and I wanted to see what that was like. Yeah, so I'm just curious as well. I don't know this actually. Where, where did your interest in going to work in a Japanese company come from? Was it from a movie, or was it from? Well, I got an interest in Japan based on art, and I'd studied Japanese, but also when I was in college, I'd done an internship in Japan.、Yeah. So I already had some experience in a Japanese company. Yeah. And it was really fascinating. Okay. So that I wanted to. So kind of you wanted more. Yeah. So, so you would have got your first taste of it through the interning thing in that case. So, so what is it that drew you? What what was cool? What 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 is it that you wanted to experience more of about working in a Japanese company? Well, I had studied organization behavior in college. Oh. And、um, <laughs> it's like the organization culture country. So yes, yes, exactly. So I was you know I was organization behavior was really interesting, and then I did、yeah. this internship in Japan. I'm like,、yeah. Wow. This is a very fascinating thing that's going on here. I wanted to learn more about it. Yeah, yeah. So, from my perspective, I don't know. It, from my perspective, it was very simple.、Um, I come from a country with fifty times more sheep than people, and <laughs> thank you. So, you know, I, you you want to work for all these companies that we use, and all these global companies and brand names that we get bombarded with in New Zealand. Sure. You want to go and work at one of these famous companies, but truth is, they only have a sales outlet or whatever in New Zealand. So, if you want to work for them, you go to Europe or you go to America or Um, I wanted to go the road less traveled, and, and go somewhere that was going to be a little bit exciting and different, and at the same time going for that sort of thing. And I, and I, there were two things about it. One, I wanted to go to Japan because Japanese companies are here, and I did have an interest in the culture and I studied the language. I also had an, another idea, which was that、um, as a non-American, I could go to America and try to go to an American university, and as a non-American, compete against all the normal American people in America to get a job in a big American company. Or I could go to Japan, and I could be better at all the Japanese corporate stuff than most people, and have that as like a special skill、mm-hmm. that I could use as my way into those American companies where I'd just be an average guy with a strange accent、uh, if I was an American. So there is this thing when you're looking at、uh, getting into global companies, or you're looking at the whole world. There is a thing if you learn Japanese and and, and you could add value from that. That that's value which can be attached to companies from all over the world that are all located with big. Big representation in Japan,、mm-hmm. so for me it was kind of、um, Japan was kind of the door to getting into the the, the the sort of top level global business thing for a start, and in order to do that, I knew that I had to differentiate myself,、mm-hmm. um, and, and a, you know, for this accent and everything else, by 
but I, I decided early on I wanted to commit to understanding Japanese business and being someone who was good with that. Mm -hmm. And that would be my, my strong point, and I focused on that. Okay. Um, so there was a uniqueness around that, which I, which I, which I, I thought, okay, that would be really cool if I could mm -hmm. do that. Right. Makes sense. So, so we, we, when you're explaining to, to people what the upsides are, well, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's good and bad, and we've talked a lot about the bad, of course, but, you know, so, so what are the upsides? What are the positives in contrast to maybe typical sort of Western companies? Right. Uh, of Japanese companies? What makes them different in kind of positive ways? Right. Well, I think one big thing about Japanese companies is that they don't pigeonhole people. Mm. And you have a lot more chance to get a lot more exposure and get involved in different things yeah. and to volunteer to work on things that are outside the area that you're working on. Yeah. So, yes, Japanese, um, they actually, and through from the education system, and again, one of my favorite books ever by Taichi mm. Sakaya, uh, doing a kind of a Japan society explanation thing. Right. And he, he illustrated this through the whole education system, how the Japan, how the, the entire economy is focused on developing generalists. Yes. He pointed that out in a, in a negative way. <laughs> he said Japanese need to develop more focused more expertise, yes. which I get. But at the same time, someone like me who loves to put my hand up for everything and figures the whole point of life is to learn as much as possible, that really appeals to me, actually. That's true. Yeah. Um, so that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, what are some other? What are some oh, other? I think well, you know, if you think about the situation of foreigners coming to work in Japan yeah. for a Japanese company, that you can get involved in things that you wouldn't be able to in any other situation. Like you know, I wrote the annual report for the company I worked for when I was twenty-four. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did that <laughs> I too. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have done that anywhere else, right? So and there's there's good there's good sides and bad sides to that. The good side is, is that you get to write the annual report. The bad side is is that the people who have to sign off on your thing will insist on making changes that you think are ridiculous, but you need to get them signed off a piece. Uh, but the top, the upside of that is that you do get to actually do that's right. You do yeah. get to do these sort of things. You get to write the um, a few a few times. Uh, I've written a few uh, letters and speeches for the company for right, major yeah, company sure. presidents. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I got kind of a kick out of that. that that's right. So you do get that kind of uh, gaijin pass, yes, <laughs> special, yeah. special special access, special access or special role that you can have. Yes. Yeah, and where you can just learn a lot yeah. from that, right? I'd say another really um, cool thing about working in Japanese companies, uh, what I still get the biggest kick out of, it, the result of developing all this experience, um, it does require you to be recognized a little bit. But but if you can get to a certain point. You can add so much value because for foreigners who are coming to Japan for business, Japanese business can seem completely unnavigable. Mm -hmm. And frankly, for a lot of Japanese people dealing with foreigners as well, I mean, there's, as we talk about through this whole series, there's all these kind of friction points and misunderstandings and so right. on. Just being the only person in the room who can figure out what's where the disconnect is on both sides and to be an enabler to so connect those. So valuable. Well, yes, exactly. And it's like, and you're doing something which frankly for both of us is more or less like riding a bicycle, but to everyone else is like you're working magic. Yes, that's uh, true. And you get a kick out of it. And you're actually, and you're creating something, you're creating positive energy, and you're actually making stuff. You're being stuff. useful, right? Yes. That is a good thing. And you really can do that in a material way. And, 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 and you know, the ability to navigate Japanese business is, is still, I'd say, say, it's an increasingly, more and more people are getting there, but it's still a rare skill to right. really be able to do it. So it's a skill worth having. It opens so many doors. There's so many, I mean, Japan still is, if you believe Chinese trade statistics, it's the third, but I, I would say there's a high possibility it still is arguably the second you know, biggest economy in the world. And it's that without, you know, in a completely open way, you've got all this access. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we could go on and on, but... Uh, <laughs> that gives you a taste. That's a taste. We are going to try to focus more on the positive. We've got, we've got lots of good topics, and we're going to get through as many as possible. You'll yes. find out how many episodes we have soon. Uh, but hang around. We're going to be talking not just about the terrible stuff, but the... Some good stuff, too. The Joy of Japanese Business, once again with Rochelle Kopp from Japan, uh, Japan Intercultural Consulting. So hang around and join us for uh, more shows, same time every week, where we will probably be wearing the same clothes.